Okay, what do we have here? This is an Amiga 1000 computer from Commodore purchased way back in 1986. This computer system is almost 30 years old today. Uh, we have the base computer. In the front here we have an expansion board that adds 256k of RAM to the device which has got 256k to start with so it doubles it up to 512k. Note that these are kilobytes and not megabytes. Megabytes would come later on and actually on this system we have this expansion board here which has two megabytes on it. We have the mouse, we have a joystick, an external floppy drive, an internal floppy drive. There is no hard drive at all. This is the 1084 monitor that came with it at the time and we have the keyboard that tucks in underneath for storage but when we need to use it we can yank it out like this we can actually prop it with the legs on either side and give it a slant so that it would be more comfortable typing this device um, had way more colors available on the display than the original IBM of the same era. Uh, it is still in perfect working order. I'm going to de demonstrate that in a minute. Uh, it's equipped. It came with all sorts of manuals. Uh, we have the introduction to Amiga computer, the original book that describes the whole system, how it plugs in, describes also uh, how to turn it on and how to use it. The base uh, operating system is described in here with plenty of screenshots. It's a well-designed manual, again, for 1986. We also have, I'm going to put this down here, the software that came with it at the time was Amiga DOS, uh, and uh, the version was 1.2 when I got it. We uh, require this disk to be inserted first to start it up. And then the operating system is on a separate disk called the Amiga Workbench. And then we have the Extras disk and Amiga Basic on it, which is a basic programming language. The instructions here will describe basically what you can do with the uh, software. Again, uh, there is a lot of information in here. Uh, the keyboards several mapping of keyboards French, Spanish, German, British, whatever. You can therefore remap the keys so that they uh, allow you to type in whatever language you want. Pretty much as the same as today's uh, standard uh, operating system like Windows or Mac OS or Linux. This is the uh, Commodore Amiga and Insert software. This is a version that came out later, about a year later. Uh, to go up to version 1.3. That was the last version that was available for the Amiga 1000. Two other, uh, three, actually three, four models came out later on, like the Amiga uh, 502000, that had a different operating system, uh, version 2.0. But uh, they were never able to make it work with the uh, original Amiga. So this is the Enhancer software manual. Again, it describes whatever is new, the new commands, the new stuff that you can do, and uh, how it works. You got the, uh, even the instructions and the uh, warranty papers and whatnot. And the diskettes in here are still in pristine condition. I would just made a copy of this one to test the device and uh, display it and make it work. Obviously, this is not a recent device. This is one of the reasons that the boxes have yellowed a little bit. Here we have also the Amiga basic manual that would teach you how to program in basic language on this computer. So, and there's a huge bunch of examples and uh, instructions and whatnot to learn to be fluent in Amiga basic. Of course this one has seen a bit more action, that's why the cover is not as nice looking as the other ones, but it's still complete, pretty much intact, not missing any pages. And I also purchased a game way back when, which is the uh, Falcon F-16 fighter simulation. Of course, any computer today 
would actually blow this out of the water because this is so old. But for the time, the whole thing is complete. Came on two discs and this manual and also the uh, commands that we needed to start the software at the time. Pretty interesting. Anybody who's interested in uh, flight simulators, this was a good one. So, we have the switch here to turn it on. Underneath here we have a volume control. We have some uh, one speaker on one side. However, if you want to have stereo sound, you'd have to hook this up to either a uh, stereo system via the um, auxiliary inputs or some other device that you could uh, use to uh, amplify the sound if you want better sound. And then, of course, the brightness, tint controls, and the color and vertical holding, all that sort of thing. This is a standard tube monitor, not a flat one, so it's rather deep. I uh, don't know if you can see that on the camera. And the switch to turn on the computer is on this side. This one is already powered up. I'm going to insert the kickstart disk. Turn this on. And this is just like, this would actually be pretty much like what we consider the BIOS today on a standard PC. So therefore this would have been on a chip inside the computer. But at the time this came out, they had to rush it to market and they could not actually burn this on a ROM. And uh, which, it, which is what they did with, for the Amiga 500 and 2000. That same software was on a chip instead of being on a floppy drive. So that's one step that we uh, that we didn't have to bother with with uh, later models but this one comes with that little quirky little thing there where we have to put in the BIOS manually first then we put the workbench disk it asks for it on the screen here nice touch as you can see this is not exactly a speedy system and it's from 1986 so it is pre Y2K a bug if you will so therefore uh, years will not display correctly there's no system clock on this thing which it says plain here battery back a clock not found there's none I also had a bunch of diskettes, uh, like this is a magazine that came on floppies. That was the first actually. You could uh, get some news through these. You had uh, edit editorial content, you had programs, you had a bunch of stuff. And that's of course part of the package. You also have a couple of uh, uh, version 1.1 and 1.2 of Amigo Times, which is basically uh, a uh, man, uh, not a manual, but a uh, magazine on disc, the same as this. This was actually done in uh, in Quebec for, by Vertex Associates. That comes with the system. A system without software is pretty much useless. So this is pretty much what it looks like. We can see here the different uh, icons. This is a graphical user interface. We wanted to be able to do stuff, so we add the shell to the utilities, the system, and as you can see, these would take time to load from the diskette. Uh, I have a, a variant of that thing which is optimized to copy most of that workbench disk to a RAM disk, and it makes it a hell of a lot faster. But anytime you wanted to do stuff, you had to double click on it and see so under the clock, you, you start the clock, you could increase the size of it like this. Whenever you start something, like I don't know, the calculator for instance, you want to use this, but you see that the menu bar at the top would change to display whatever window was opened. It was technically deemed to be a multitasking system at the time, however, the uh, Motorola MC68000, uh, which is in there, is, uh, <laughs> I mean, your standard cell phone of today blows this thing out of the water, totally, at 7.16 megahertz, and today's systems are 
in the gigahertz, so it's a thousand times faster. So that's pretty much it for the demonstration of the Amiga 1000 by Commodore from 1986. Thank you for watching.